Hey everybody, it's Julie, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World. Um, today is Wednesday, March 25th, I believe. And this is Flash Tube number 58, and I have so much to show you um, and so much to talk about. So, um, lots of whips. Unfortunately, a lot, a lot of haul. <laughs> and some changes to plans. So um, let's just like get it over with. I know you guys don't wanna hear about it. COVID-19 coronavirus. I promise I will be brief. I know that we are all just totally like over inundated with, um, with news about the virus, right? And um, it is very serious. I take it very seriously. I work in healthcare. I am still working full time, 40 hours a week. Um, but I know a lot of you are not. I know a lot of you are home and stitching and that's wonderful. But I know that people are very, very worried right now about um, financial, um, employment, the economy. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff to worry about. Um, I'm very grateful that I have a paycheck right now but um, I'm luckily in a position where I am not currently, you know, exposed uh, to my knowledge. I think all of us could be exposed at any time to the virus, but um, I'm not in the ER seeing walk-ins with symptoms. We, I'm in a clinic and we have drastically reduced our patients and um, are taking precautions and hopefully I will be safe, I hope. Um, anyway, I know that there have been a, a ton of you filming floss tubes lately, I think, because you have some free time at home. Um, so I am like super behind on my watch list um, and maybe some of you are feeling the same. So I do apologize if I am clogging up um, anyone's uh, watch later list with another video to, that they would like to watch. I hope, I hope you would like to watch. Um, but I have a lot to show you guys and I just wanted to get a video out. So, um, that's that. So let's move on from the virus, but well, no, before we move on, I just want to say one thing. Um, my heart goes out to everyone who's affected by the virus. And right now that's all of us, um, whether actually affected or just, you know, our lives are, are totally upended right now. Um, and I was just thinking today about, you know, retreats. I have signed up to go to a retreat in September. I would hope that everything has calmed down by then. But um, I know that a lot of you we're planning to go to retreats this spring into summer. Um, and I know that a lot of those or, or all of those have been canceled and my heart goes out to you guys is that super sucks. Um, but you know, we need to be safe. Um, I know frugal Yankee was canceled. I think to be rescheduled later. Um, Priscilla and Chelsea had gone down south, I think, to the Leela May retreat, and they got to do like one day, but then the next two days got canceled. I think Melanie Soulful Stitcher, her retreat in Florida has been canceled, and I think I heard about another one. I know that there's a lot of retreats um, in March and April that aren't going to be able to happen, so um, what I'm mostly hearing is that the organizers are going to reschedule and honor the deposit and honor the, you know, the, the spot for the person. And that sure seems like the right thing to do to me. Um, we have a national mandate to avoid gatherings of over 10 people. So really no retreats should be going on in March or April. Um, so hopefully everybody will be doing the right thing. Um, and I do know that uh, StitchCon, you know, it's not until this summer, but they're even talking about like, you know, they hope it will go on, but if anyone feels like it wouldn't be safe to go, or if they do end up having to cancel, that they would give full refunds, um, which I think is very, very, very nice of them to do. 
Um, that's all I have to say about that. I'm sorry about all the people who are missing out on retreats. That really, really, really sucks. And it's crazy. It's just crazy. I mean, I'm, I don't even know what to say. Like, I'm so... It just so consumes my life, like at work all day long. Um, and I know that you all, you know, it's consuming you as well. But um, it's, it's just so crazy what, what we're dealing with right now. Um, it, it, I've one, th I'll just say one more thing and then I, and then I promise I'll stop talking about it. Um, it's so pervasive that I'm, I was reading a book and I just like kept having to remind myself like this book like these people are not dealing with what we're dealing with right now because it's like a contemporary book and I kept you know I would read something and I'd be like she's not supposed to be doing that like she needs to be social distancing and then I'd be like this book was written 10 years ago <laughs> like it's just it's so pervasive it's just all that we all can think about and I don't know about you guys I I'm guessing this is the case for most of you stitching has been you know, such a sanctuary for me. It's already like something I do every day. Um, but it's something that calms me, that relieves stress, that just helps me kind of center. And um, I'm so glad that I have that in my life right now. I know a lot of people are really struggling with you know, kind of the isolation and being inside. And for me, it's like, oh, I do that anyway. <laughs> so it doesn't seem that different to me. It's like my normal lifestyle is kind of quarantined. So um, it hasn't been that much of a hardship for me. But I know that some people are definitely struggling. But um, I do feel like we're all getting a lot of stitching done. And that's great. Unfortunately, I'm not getting like more stitching done than usual because I'm still working. So I don't get that extra stitchy time. But regardless, I have worked on a lot of things and I've um, got a lot of progress and, and projects to show you guys. And um, I think actually let's do that. Let's do whips and then I'll do haul. Um, so what's first? I'll, I'm not going to go in any particular order. So I've continued to work on um, Prim Village by Lori Holt be in my bonnet. This is, um, this pattern is available at the fat quarter shop and they are hosting a stitch along that I'm participating in. And, um, they sent me the pattern, the fabric and the floss. So it calls for this aura fill floss instead of like DMC. And I don't know, I can't remember if I got, if I actually showed you guys, what the floss looks like last video. I think I might have. Um, it's, it's not like an over dye. It's a, it's a single, it's a solid tone. Um, it's similar to DMC, but it's a little different. I talked about it last video. I'm not going to go into it again. Um, I like the floss. I'm enjoying working with the floss, but somebody did ask me if I could show the DMC. Um, the called for DMC and I did pull the DMC so I can show you guys that. So first let me show you my progress. Um, I am stitching this. So the pattern calls for stitching this on 25 count Lugana, two threads over two. Um, and that is just a little too big for me. Um, I don't even like 28 count really. So I just, I couldn't bring myself to do it. But the fabric is really beautiful. It's, uh, the fabric is called Oatmeal. It's sold at Fat Quarter Shop. Um, and it's a 25 count Lugana. And um, it's so pretty. So I wanted to use the fabric, but I just didn't want to do the 25 count. So I decided to do one thread over one square on 25 count which makes this project equivalent in size to if I was stitching on a 50 count linen. So basically it's itty bitty, um, but it is so cute. So look, I mean, look how pretty this fabric is. Like you can see why I wanted to use it. It's really, really pretty. Um, it is similar, I believe in, 
my recollection, it's very similar to vintage country mocha. If, um, I know fat quarter shop was, was sold out of this for a while, they might've restocked. Um, the back is not printed. The back is a solid. And then it's just the, the printed on one side, just like vintage country mocha. So, um, that could be a good substitute if you can't find the oatmeal, but it, I mean, you see how pretty it is. It's really, really pretty. Um, and here are my tiny little one over one houses. Really just, I mean, the whole thing is going to be like six inches by six inches when I'm done. It's so, so cute. So, um, oh, that reminds me. So I, in last video, I said I was going to do a giveaway for this and I, I am, um, but I said I would, you know, pick a winner so I could ship it out immediately and get it to you. And then, um, coronavirus blew up and I don't want to go to the post office. So I'm sorry. Um, this will be sent to a winner eventually, but I don't know. I, I'm going to have to venture to the post office probably in a week or so. Um, there's a few things I have to send out, so I might go ahead and, and do it then. But I just, I couldn't justify a post office trip right now. Um, okay, so DM, blah, 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 DMC um, equivalents, right? I'm, I've got most of them. I had most of them in stash. So, um, 3817 is the DMC of that. I think that's pretty close. And then 503 is the equivalent for the other one. And I think this one is a little off. I think you need to go a little darker, maybe a 502. Um, these two are a little too, Ooh, sorry. That's got blown out. I think these two are a little too close. Um, the 3817 is close though. You just need to go darker than the 503. It could be my 503. Um, for the yellow house, 3855 is this color. I think that's pretty dang close. And then 725 is the darker gold, darker gold, and I think that's probably pretty close. Um, I think these really will look good in DMC because they're, I mean, you just need to, to be colorful and a solid. And then for the pink house, 761 is the equivalent for the light pink. I think that's pretty close. And I did not have the darker pink in stash. I think it was 38 33 and I might own it, but I couldn't find it. So I don't have that one to show you. Um, I didn't have the browns and grays except for one of them. The border and the chimneys are a match. I think a pretty close match to 3861, but I didn't have the dark brown or the gray in my stash that I could find. I apologize for my nails, but it'd be irresponsible for me to be wearing fake nails right now. So I'm not. Okay. So that was one whip. Um, and then what else do we have in here? I said, we're not going in any particular order, right? So I'm just going to pull something out. Um, this was an impulse purchase. Um, You'll see I made quite a few of those. I, this might be the only one that I actually started, but um, I needed this pattern. It's the Witchy Stitcher, and it's called Witch Crafts. And I need I, I needed it, and then I needed to start it right away. So my, um, my friend Rachel, she's a local uh, stitchery friend, and she was like, you know, I really, I'm going to get that too. And then she's like, do you want to sell it? And I was like, I could be talked into that. Um, so we ended up like starting it the next day. So, um, fun thing about this pattern is it's actually quite a bit smaller than I thought it would be. Um, I don't know why it just, it looks like a decent size, but it's actually pretty small. 
So it stitched up really fast. I'm almost done. I had a leftover piece of Picture This Plus Crystal Flapper, which I'm stitching a Mirabilia on. And it was just big enough to, so it was like a weird, like long, skinny piece. And it, um, it, it fit this. So the end of the piece is right here. So I'm going to end up cutting off this little extra bit here. And I'm just using the called for DMC. And I absolutely love it on this purple. I think it looks so good. So yeah, it stitched really fast. Um, of course, this cauldron circle thing took a, a good chunk of time. But otherwise, I'm almost done. I think one more night and I could finish this. So again, this is what it looks like. I took a chance with the purple and I think it's paying off. I really like the way it's looking. I don't know how well the sparkles are showing up for you guys, but this is a sparkle fabric. So I was um, watching, while I was stitching this last weekend, I was watching um, season two of The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina on Netflix. It just seemed apropos. So what else is in here? Oh, another witchy stitcher pattern. Let's take a little time out tangent. For March, I had said my plans were to do March Madness and my version, <laughs> real March Madness was canceled because of coronavirus. I think that's when I was like, oh, this is really, really happening now. Um, I knew more than the average person about the virus because my boyfriend has been very, very, very into it. Um, ever since it was in China, he's been doing all the reading, all the things and telling me about it. Um, anyway, March Madness was canceled, whatever. For my stitchy March Madness, I was going to work on a different whip every day of the month to have a total of 31 uh, work on 31 different whips for the month. And that's why I have so many whips to show you guys. However, um, I did really good the first week. I did good the second week and then I just couldn't anymore. It was really just, I was too anxious about everything going on. And I, it was just one more thing to stress me out. And I just had to let it go and just be like, you know what? I'm going to stitch on what I want for as long as I want. If I want to stitch on something for five days, that's just what it is. Like I cannot handle the stress right now of pulling out a different project every single day. It worked fine the first week or two. I was feeling good about it. I really did have intentions of completing that challenge, but I just, I couldn't do it. And you know, I implore all of you, like if you're stitching goals ever become to the point of like, not being fun like it's okay it's okay to let it go so i couldn't handle that extra stress um but i had pulled this project out because i was trying to touch 31 different whips for the month it's another pattern by the witchy stitcher and i think it's just called ouija board it's the title Where's the title? I don't know. I don't see a title. She actually has four different Ouija boards. Um, and I plan to stitch them all someday. Anyway, I pulled this out and I'm stitching this on, it just calls for DMC 310 and white, you know, super, super simple. I'm stitching this on 28 count Monaco that I dyed myself. Absolutely love it. I only worked on it for one day, you know, because of, you know. But here's my fabric that I dyed. Doesn't it look so good? And here's my work. I think that one could be finished pretty easily with a little bit of just dedicating a, a little bit of time to it. We could get there. We could get there. Um, I pulled out, friend, again, 
with my March Madness, so I only got to work on this one day. I pulled out Stone Street Stitchworks Book House. I lived in books more than I lived anywhere else. It's a, a quote by Neil Gaiman. I'm stitching this on an Exju Designs fabric. I can't remember. Uh, do I have it in here? I don't see the tag. Oh, there it is. Um, Dark Desert is what it's called. It's a 36 count. And I am just subbing random flosses like color and cottons and DMCs. Um, and I work some more on the window panes in the house over my lunch break. It's gonna be pretty small. So not a ton of progress on that because I only got to work on it for like half an hour. Another one that I think could be finished quickly with a little dedication. Um, and then another one I worked on over lunch hour so I didn't get a ton done was um, this Plum Street Samplers. This is Peace, Love, and Purpose. I bought the kit from uh, Spring Green Country Samplers in Wisconsin. It's the called for weeks fabric and the called for um, fancy flosses. It looks like this. I love it. Um, so I worked on this at lunch, so I didn't get to do a ton, but I did get a little bit done. It's also going to be very petite. Looking good. Okay, so the, then I got, um, I think the other projects I, I worked on maybe got to do a little bit more, um, spend a little more time on them. Well, except for uh, this one I only got to do over lunch as well. So let me show this. So this pattern is, uh, this was my Dark 13, Stitch Halloween 13 start. Um, so I did this on March 13th. This pattern was very, it was a very special, I made a post about it, you might have seen it. Uh, it's kind of a special event. Um, this is a pattern by M. Kissa Creations on Etsy, and it's things I know for certain. It's a practical magic inspired pattern. There's her shop name down there. M. Kissa. And um, she's a member of the Stitcher's Coven on Facebook. So that's how I found out about this pattern. Um, I will read it to you because I know you probably couldn't read that. It's a practical magic inspired pattern. Always throw spilled salt over your left shoulder. Keep rosemary by your garden gate. Plant lavender for luck and fall in love whenever you can. I am stitching this on fabric that Diana, it is Kismet Stitches, had dyed. Um, herself and sent to me because she's sweet. Oh, there's my needle. I was missing that needle. Um, Diana sent me this fabric and it's absolutely gorgeous. And I'm stitching it with just random color and cottons except for, for the purple, for the lavender section. I'm going to use this, um, this floss that Audrey Stitchy Witch 42 sent me, it's called Witch's Brew. So pretty. And I've just been saving it for something special. And this is it. <laughs> so um, I only got to work on this at lunch, so I only got a little bit done, but I did get a, a little start on that. Um, and here's the fabric that Diana dyed. It's so pretty. just so pretty. I love it. <laughs> and I love that she sent it to me. So yeah, I need to get back to that. Um, and then Marissa in Kissa Creations uh, released another practical magic inspired pattern a couple days ago, and I will show you that in haul. So okay, so then projects that I got to spend just a little bit more time with um, than just my lunch break. <laughs> Okay, so I pulled out Merrily Merrily We Welcome Spring by Blackbird Designs, and this is a big one. I 
am uh, stitching this on fab 40 count fabric that I dyed myself, but I'm using all the called for fancy blouses. So the story about this fabric, uh, it's, uh, I believe a lakeside linens. I think it's something like vintage rose, something rose. I ordered it off one, two, three stitch. The swatch looked like it, you know, was, would be what I wanted. It got here and it was like, bubblegum, cotton candy pink. And I was like, no, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. And somebody was like, well, why don't you just tea dye it? And I was like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. It might've been Amy Gable stitcher that told me to do that. I don't remember for sure. It might've been what sparked our friendship. Might've been, I'll have to ask Amy. Um, so anyway, I lightly tea dyed it and baked it a little bit. It brought the bubblegum pink down to like a muted, like dusty pink, which was much more what I wanted. <laughs> so it's more like a peachy pink now. So very subtle. Um, but here is where I'm at on this. Basically, like just to not get too bored, what I'm doing is, um, like I'll do a length of floss and then I'll go down to the next color and do a length of floss and then go down to the next color, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so for this round, so I had done that all the way down and then this time I went back and did more of the border and more of this part and then it was time to go to bed, I think. So there's that. all I got to say about that um and then um I pulled out a really old whip <coughs> excuse me it's allergies it's allergies uh it's not the rona um it's 65 degrees the last two days and things are blooming okay but we're gonna get snow on Friday so anyway I pulled out Plum Street samplers um heritage sampler I, this calls for a million classic color works and weeks dye works. I'm subbing with silks, mostly dinky dyes. I'm stitching this on a Lakeside Linen 36 count vintage lintel. <coughs> and here, oh, I love vintage lintel. It looks so good. And here's where I got to that on that. Here's where I got to on that. Okay. Then, sorry, I feel like I like chipped a nail. Um, so then here's, here's the piece de resistance. You guys aren't going to believe it. It snowed last week, uh, Thursday and Friday. So I got out Snow Queen by Mirabilia, my snow project. I worked on her Thursday and Friday. And then I was just making such wonderful progress on her and I just felt like I was so close to the end that I couldn't put her down. So I worked on her Saturday and Sunday as well. So she got four days, you guys. She's almost done. She is, she is so close, so close. She will be done in April. I'm saying it now. She will be done in April, whether it snows or not, but it'll probably snow. Oh my God. She's so close. Um, of course she has a million beads, but the stitching is almost done. Um, I'm stitching her on 32 count hand dyed fabrics by Stephanie in Pollywog Princess, which I love so much. I say it every time, but I really do love it. And I did a red hair conversion because the, I was not feeling this gold hair. No offense if you have gold hair. Um, I will post the conversion in the description box because people always ask for it. I think it looks pretty good if I do say so myself. 
Um, but yeah, are you guys ready? Because I went gangbusters on her. The back of her dress is done. All that. I did all that, basically. Everything that's in the frame, I have done. Um, she's so big, it's hard. Like, I can't see, I can't see what you can see right now. Ugh. All that is left on her, stitching-wise, is this bit of her dress. And that is... The reason it's like, it might seem weird that I left that and then went back to it, but it was just the way the page broke on the pattern. Um, so yeah, just that, just that little bit, it just kind of goes straight down and connects at the bottom of the dress there. Um, I was looking at the pattern, it's like 30 stitches wide by like 60 high. It's full coverage with a little like le space for beads but that's all I have left like I can't do the math 2,000 stitches maybe I don't know not a lot though but look at all this I did I did all the bottom of her dress and all like that back train of her dress um so she will be done in April because I'm going to finish that little bit and then I'm going to, I feel like I want to start beading her right away. I have all the beads. I bought them all like when I bought the pattern. I started her in April of 2018. So if I finish her in April of 2020, she would have taken exactly two years. Um, what else do I want to say? Oh, whisper thread. The bottom of the train calls for some whisper. I don't know if you guys can make it out. It's like, it's this fuzzy bit. It's these fuzzy bits here. Um, I don't think I will ever use that again. <laughs> it is horrible. <laughs> The stories are true. Everything you've heard about Whisper Thread is true. It was absolutely awful. Hated it! Um, I do have some tips um, just that I've heard from other people. Um, short lengths, yes, because it, it just kind of starts to disintegrate. Short lengths are very important. Um, and then... Um, one of my stitchy friends, Melissa, Starla Stitcher, she said, um, I didn't follow her advice, <laughs> but she told me, she said, really, the fuzzy part, it only matters on, on the top of the stitch. So she said you should do the first half of the stitch, you know, like all down a row, in regular DMC and then only use the whisper for the top half of the stitch coming back. Cause then you're not manipulating your thread as much and it'll hold up better. But she told me to do that, but I really just, and I trusted her, I trusted what she was telling me, but it was my first time working with whisper and I just wanted like the full experience. I was like, I'm gonna do it right. So I did do short lengths, but I did do full X's. And it sucked and I hated it. And if I ever need to use Whisper again, which I think it does call for it on like Santa's beard on my Mirabilia Santa. Um, I don't know. I'll have to think long and hard about whether it's worth it. Pain in the butt. There she is one last time, folks. I cannot wait to start beating her because oh she's gonna be so blingy and beautiful um she's big she's big for a mirabilia so you know it's just like it's a lot it's been a lot of work and I'm just excited that like 
the end is in sight. And so it is going to snow on Friday, but I think even so, even after that, I think I'll keep stitching her until, you know, until she's done. Like all I have left to do is like this little bit right here of her dress. I think there's more whisper right there. Damn it. I think that's more that's definitely more whisper <laughs> I was really hoping I was done with the whisper <laughs> let me see one two three four yep more whisper one more section of whisper I will persevere and then I will never use it again okay so that was all my whips um so the the last thing to talk to you about is haul um buckle in because um here's what i learned about myself in the last two weeks when i am stressed and anxious i like to buy cross stitch patterns and it didn't help that everybody was having a sale too um Stitch from Stash, we're not doing that anymore. We're not. We're not. I'm sorry, Stephanie. I'm sorry. It's... Maybe we'll try again in, in July. <laughs> For now, Stitch from Stash, it's done. It's done. Um, I have so much haul. So part of it was market, right? I had done a market pre-order. But then on top of that, I have so much haul. Um, so first thing I did is I went to my LNS. It's called a stitching shop. It's in Denver. This was before um, the coronavirus stuff was really getting serious. It was like, I think, De uh, not Denver, um, Colorado maybe had one case. It was starting to become a thing. And I needed um, a couple of things. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to the, the shop before this gets to the point where I don't want to go out in public and shop. <laughs> so I went down um, to Denver to a stitching shop. And I lost my mind um, while I was there. <laughs> I... I don't even know. You know what? I think I needed some threads for some secret stitching. That was another whip, which you don't get to see. I'm doing some secret stitching. So, um, I needed some, I needed some threads for that. That's why I went. And I, so I needed to see them in person, right? Like I needed to see them. So I don't know why, but for some reason, after I, you know, went and got my threads, I was like, let me, um, I just want to go look at some cross stitch patterns and like, just kind of look. And she has them organized by designer in crates along the wall. So I went and looked at like the Blackbird and, you know, I just like went and looked at my favorite designers. And then I was like, let me look at the Plum Street. Like, I doubt there's anything like I need. But let me go look. I lost my mind. I bought all the Plum Street patterns. <laughs> Here's the thing. She had a bunch of old ones. I don't know how I have missed these. Like, in the two years I've been going there, I don't know if I just always forgot to look at Plum Street. Like, I don't know what I was doing, but I'd never seen these before. Like, some of them I was like... I have never seen that before. And other ones, I'm like, I've definitely seen that before. I thought it was impossible to get. Turns out it's sitting right here. So what did I get? I grabbed Pretty Pleasures 1759. This is a chart from 2012. That's George and Mar Martha Washington. I almost called her Marshington. It says, these pretty pleasures might me move to live with thee and be thy love. Um, it's a poem by Sir Walter Raleigh. 
was a response to Christopher Marlowe's love poem. And it's George and Wa Martha Washington, and they married in 1759, which is the year. And I just thought it was very, very sweet. I just thought it was sweet. And then this one, somehow, I had never seen. This is from 2013. It's called My Dearest Friend, and it's John and Abigail Adams. I just had never seen it, and I really liked it. This one, I'm pretty sure, is a reprint because there's no year on it. It was really hard to find for a while, but then I believe Paulette reprinted it. So I think it's you can find it now, and it's Garden of Erie. I just always wanted it. Again, for a while it was really hard to find, but then I don't think that's the case anymore. She had a couple of these. If anyone is looking for this, you can call. Um, Denver has ordered a shutdown of all non-essential businesses. So um, the my LNS, a stitching shop, is closed. However, she is willing to do phone orders. Um, no one can come into the shop, but if you give her a call, she can still like get to the shop and pack up an order for you. So I know she had more of these if anyone's been looking for this. I've always loved it. I just, I needed it. <clears throat> and then I grabbed this one. It's from 2013. And I think I might have seen it once or twice, but it wasn't super familiar to me. It's Betsy's House. Um, and then the ones I was really <laughs> excited about, really excited about. I wanted this pattern ever since Diana, it is Kismet, stitched it. It's Emma Nettles, 1636. This chart is from 2006. And I thought it was just impossible to find. And they had it. Whew, I snapped that up quick. Um, so it says Emma Nettles. She finally departed this life. May. I can't read that. May 19, 1636. What the hell does that say? I think it's like dating, but it's super weird looking. I'm going to zoom in for you guys. Anyway, there's some dating stuff. And then it says, the one she loved most lies neath this head post. The wages of sin is death. She was paid well. So Emma Nettles was some bad bitch. Anyway, go to Diana's Instagram. It is Kismet if you want to see this because she stitched it and it's amazing. I'm so excited to find that. And then another one that's really hard to find is Amos Fig 1808. Another chart from this one's from 2007. And it says, here lies Amos Fig, May 17th, 1808. Dear Tilly, a oh wife, I could not pass by. The Lord showed his mercy. Now bo now here we both lie. Both a little bit up. And then the other one I had to have is Jane Withers, 1640. This chart's from 2006. And this one says, Interred am I in resting place. Weep not for me, I've run my race. For I have breathed my last breath here. When you breathe yours, we shall be near. Now, I know that my LNS had more of these. I just, I can't remember which ones. I don't, I, I think one or two of these, I might have got the only one. But one or two of these, I know there was another copy. So, you know, you can call and check in with her if you've been looking for those. Um, 
when I was over at the Blackbird Designs um, file, this jumped into my hands. <laughs> this isn't hard to find. You can you can find this one. It's for my best friend, and I just um, really loved the big sampler in here. I just think it's so pretty. And unique like I feel like it doesn't it's that it's not like a Quaker you're used to seeing I just really really like it so I really just bought this for that um, but there are a couple of other really cute charts in here there's um, these sweet little smalls I'm trying to cover the chart these two little hearts um, Oh, here. Here's both of them together. Like, those are really cute. Would stitch up super fast. And then there's a really uh, pretty, there's a cute stocking, but there's a, another really pretty little sampler in here. Our home sewing box. I thought that was really cute as well. But mostly I wanted this sampler. I went ahead and bought the next um, Mill Hill for my Haunted Village that I'm doing. So I bought Opera House. I don't know when I'll get back to that, but I wanted the next one for when I do. And then um, randomly caught my eye, I've never seen it before, Rovaris. Um, she had these cute little kits, um, literary quote bookmarks, and they were really affordable. I think it was like 16, no, it wasn't even $16. It was $14. Um, this one says obstinate, headstrong girl, Jane Austen. There was one that said the, the scarlet letter. And then there was a Shakespeare one. I think it said to be or not to be comes with the linen and all the little charms. It doesn't come with the floss, but I think it's just a couple colors of DMC. But it comes with the linen and all of the trim. I'd never seen it before and I had to have that. Okay, so that was my haul from um, my LNS. It should have been done. That, that should have been that. But it wasn't. It wasn't. So <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Okay, so um, let's get a uh, market. Market, okay? Market. I got uh, my pre order from Abby Top Knot Stitcher. I ordered a lot of things from her. So, um, first thing I ordered was the Primitive Hair um, Special Printed Lemon, Linen. <laughs> linen. Um, I got the actual pattern for this directly from Primitive Hair on her Etsy. But here's the printed linen. It's so pretty. And the pattern that goes on there is the Mermaid of Salem Bay, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. It's so pretty. Oh, that tail. There's a close-up. Um, she's really not that big. 156 by 130. It's not a ton of stitching. But if you, um situate her right then you can get you know this ship on the linen so I got I do need to figure that part out because I don't think it's like put her dead center so you know, I'll figure it out <clears throat> so I didn't get the pattern from Abby but I got the linen from Abby um I got this fairy wool in the wood Victorian Halloween history I just, I don't know, I was really drawn to this. I love Victorian stuff. Um, oh, Abby sent a cute little Easter egg needle minder as a little thank you. Whoa, 
glare. Oh, that's really cute. <laughs> um, I didn't look at it too closely when my order came in. I got Ink Circles, The Queen That Was. This is a really small little chart. It's 57 by 57, but I just really like the look of it. I'm going to do that with some metallics. It does call for, the gold is Krynik. Maybe I'll do like more than that. Sparkly. We'll see. I got Bendy Stitchy Rolodex Morning Sampler. I love the, I This one is sort of like, there's a lot I want to start soon, but this one's definitely like up higher on the list of uh, need to start sooner than later. I love that. I love that. And I love Carla Rolodex Stitcher. So I love that collaboration between those two lovely women. I also got Bendy Stitchy Hildy's Strawberry Patch. Super, super cute. Ugh. I love this more and more. Like, the more I see it. <laughs> I love Hildy. I wasn't sure about the strawberry, but, like, the more I see it, the more I'm, like, obsessed with it. Hildy's riding a ladybug. It's so cute. Um, Okay. When I saw this one, I just like died and had to have it. It's Teresa Kogut, Pet All the Dogs. It's this gorgeous traditional sampler. And then at the bottom it says, Pet All the Dogs. And I needed it. I needed it. I also needed Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread. Coffee first. I needed that. And then I think this might be my favorite market release. It's Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread Salt Box Quilt Sampler. I absolutely love it. I think market this year was really, really good. There were a lot of really great patterns, but I think that one's my favorite. Um, then, of course, I decided there were some more market things I needed. I hadn't pre-ordered the Blackbirds because um, you couldn't. No one knew what they were releasing until market. So um, I made an order with Fat Quarter Shop, and I wanted to get the Blackbird booklet, the sewing club, but they were back ordered. Um, I will try to pick that up at some point. I did go ahead and grab We Live in Hope. I really like that. You can actually do like a smaller version. No, it's a totally different, it's a totally different pattern. I love both of them. I really love both of them. Um, and then Blackbird Designs released another pattern called Little Birds, and I ordered that with my LNS. I'm not going to go pick it up anytime soon, but she's holding it for me. Um, and then I got Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread Token of Love, and I really, really love this one too. It's just so gorgeous. That, oh, that is one good looking Quaker. That is so pretty. Oh, also from Fat Quarter Shop, I got some thread. So I got the new Gentle Arts Witching Hour, which I think is selling out everywhere. Um... Seeing it in person, I'm like whelmed. I'm whelmed. <laughs> I've actually dyed thread myself that looks just like this. Um, it's like a plum raisin brown purple dark color. It's fine. Um, and then I grabbed for my secret stitching, I needed some uh, greens. And um, so I grabbed Classic Color Works Balsam Fur and Mistletoe. And mistletoe is way too bright and light, but I think balsam fur might work for my purposes. 
which you will maybe see someday if it doesn't suck. Um, so then, okay. And then I really, this is when I really lost my mind. Like I had done my market pre-order and, um, then I had added a couple more market things. Uh, and then the coronavirus stuff got really, really, really bad. And everybody was doing sales on Etsy and I just went a little crazy. So yeah. So first <laughs> Willow Hill sampler samplings, Willow Hill samplings on Etsy. I'd had these like saved in my cart forever and she was doing a really good sale. I think it was like 30% off. Um, so I finally just got them. So I got Alice's Lament. Oh, love it. And then this one, it's so, oh, this picture is terrible. The pictures on her Etsy, like it's gorgeous. These, this picture is awful. Quaker Bluebird Sampler is what it's called. Terrible picture. It's much prettier than that. <laughs> um, there's been a lot of freebies. I'll show you the freebies after I show my haul. <laughs> um, mm, so M. Kissa Creations. I told you guys that she had another practical. Practical Magic Inspired pa Pattern. <laughs> it's called Midnight Margaritas. I love it. Now I now I really want to like go work on that. That other one. Things I know for certain. Um, okay, so her new one is Midnight Margaritas. And it's the recipe for Midnight Margaritas. <laughs> Eye of Newt, Toe of Frog, Wing of Bat, Tongue of Dog, Adder's Fork, and Blind Worm Sting, Barbados Lime is just the thing, Fragia Salt, like a sailor's stubble, flip the switch and let the cauldron bubble. Love that. I bought... Hewitt Hill Samplers. I think everything there was 50% off, but I restrained myself to one. I needed another Red Work Sampler because I needed it. It's a law. Uh, Budwina Leutscher is the one I grabbed. I think it was like five bucks. Like, you know, that was reasonable. Not Forgotten Farm. I love Not Forgotten Farm, like so much. And I had like a million of them saved in my cart, just waiting for a sale. And they had a sale. <laughs> so one of these was a PDF, so I got it instantly. And then two of them I had to wait because they were actually paper patterns, but they sent, she sent them super fast. I had them within like a couple days. Um, so the PDF was Nantucket Broom Ride. I'm like obsessed with this right now. It's a witch riding a whale. But look at the, the town. You see that? The town. Which one's right side up and which one's upside down? I love that. And then the two that came in the mail were just ones that I wanted forever. And like I said, just kind of waiting to see if there was ever a sale. I got Sisters of the Broom. And then one I've really, really, really wanted for so long, Salem Village. Um, one thing about Not Forgotten Farm is uh, she charts in DMC, like her patterns are all DMC, but they still have that like primitive rustic look. And then lastly, is this it? Oh my God. Also wanted forever, have had in my cart, saved forever. She finally had a sale. 
<clears throat> Brooks Books. I mean, she always has a sale, but she had like a really, really good sale. Um, so I grabbed some princess princess gowns that I've wanted forever from Brooks Books. So I got Belle, Beauty and the Beast. And I got Cinderella. She's so pretty. Ah, sorry. Okay, hey, there we go. Okay, that was all my haul. I mean, that was enough, right? Let me show you some freebies. I've also been, oh my God. The freebies, you guys, out of control. So many freebies. Um, the community, like, designers have been so generous. Like, just, you know, they know everybody's stuck at home stitching and they're just releasing all these free patterns. And um, if you... A good source for them is um, Michelle Bendy. She is um, every day like post highlighting them in her Instagram stories of all the freebies. And there she's made a hashtag um, called Be Well and Stitch. And so if you go to that hashtag on Instagram, you can find all the freebies. There's so many. Um, here's some of the ones I've grabbed. Barbara Anna very generously gave this freebie called The Key. And I love this one. Um, Night Spirit Studios, who has become one of my favorite Etsy designers. She has some amazing patterns. Absolutely amazing. Um, she gave us this freebie, self-isolating bat. And then today, right before I left work, I saw she had another one she had just posted called just one more page I love that because that is me <laughs> just one more just one more page um the witchy stitcher group on Facebook I believe is where I got this one um it's a plague doctor and it says wash your damn hands there's a black and white and then there's a color version and I, I downloaded the color version it looks really cool I've seen people starting to stitch that. It looks really good. Um, and then last, another Etsy seller who I really love, Little Room in the Attic. She posted three generous freebies, like good size. Um, one is I stay at home with my cat. One is I stay at home with the internet. And one is, I stay at home for reading. And I just love those. I love those. So those are just some of the, there's so many freebies. Those are just some that I've grabbed. Um, okay, so I think that's all the stitchy stuff. I know um, at this point I would normally do book talk, but I have only completed one book since my last video. Um... I'm making really good progress in a few others, but I've only read one book, um, so I'm. this is gonna be long enough, so I'll just talk books next time. Um, this is plenty for now. <laughs> if you stuck with me this long, thank you so much for watching. Um, please stay safe, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, practice good hand hygiene, please wash your hands, um, and please, 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 respect, social distancing, isolating, quarantine, whatever you need to do um, to keep yourself and others safe. Just please, please, <laughs> please as a nurse, I'm begging you, please, please do not go out unless you absolutely have to. Please. <laughs> okay. Until next time, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.